If you're seriously ill or critically injured... Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? He's struggling to breathe. Very seriously injured. In some of the UK's most remote places... Oh, 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 I can't! Oh, yeah. Stay on the line and I'll tell you exactly what to do next. There's just been an accident on the M1 motorway. It's on fire and it's gone into the railway bridge. Your life is on the line. How far did he fall? About five metres. He's intubated and ventilated. You need some of Britain's most elite medics. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, there is, yeah. Calm, fill, legs, anything below my neck. We're in a remote location in the middle of the woodland. They've broken the back. The speed of the Yorkshire Air Ambulance can make the difference between life and death. Your take off. Yeah. Yeah. Better stay nine lifted. Today, a mountain biker hits rocks head first. He's lost all sensation from the neck down. Felt like my head was just rolling down the hill. Yeah. Couldn't feel legs, anything. A driver and passenger are trapped in their car after it left the road and cartwheeled into trees. Come off the road um, at speed, access is quite difficult. We've also got a ditch full of water. Nice and still for me, my friend. And the team fly into an isolated farm to rescue a tractor driver injured in a freak accident. This chap was with her. He thought she was dead. At Helimed headquarters, paramedic Tony Wilkes is on the phone to the ambulance service control room. There's an emergency in Woodland on the edge of the Peak District. Just haven't got a job, mate. Get inside. The mountain bike. Yeah. The rider is lying badly injured. Hey, I do need mountain rescue for that problem as well. Helimed 98 is off the ground in less than a minute. They'll be over the emergency scene in ten. Tell me exactly what's happened. We're in a remote location in the middle of a woodland. The patient has fallen off the bike. They're complaining that they've broken their back and can't feel their arms and their legs. Eyes out around here somewhere. Yeah, looking. Paramedic James Stubbley is navigating today. The patient is in luck. James is a mountain rescue leader with an encyclopedic knowledge of the Peak District. This road is where they'll access with the RRV, the road that runs in between. The RRV is just below us now. Yeah. All right. Well, you know where the rooms are? There's, there's rods both sides of the road, that's the trouble. It's probably nearly two miles oh, from the next gate to where the patient is. OK. So that's why I'm saying that we might need fire brigade to put the lock off. Right, OK. They're flying over one of Yorkshire's most popular and dangerous mountain biking sites. But on the far side near the car park, there's a lot of downhill black runs. On the, on, on the other side? On the other side, where the car park was yeah. going out, further out, yeah. I can't see out at all. But it's still not going to be easy to find the casualty. They only have vague directions from the 999 call to go on. Do you want to put it down in that field below yeah, us? And I'll ask them. The woods below cover thousands of acres, and the team has few clues to the scene of the accident. Uh, RRV just pulling up the car park, so. It's just tight left and right. Left other than the trees. Clear. clear right, mate. It's very boggy in the foot. Yeah. Pilot Gary's touching down so paramedic Paul Holmes can ask other bikers if they have any clues. A bit more firmer there, mate. OK, to get out, Gary. Yeah, I'm just going to go to Idle, I'll wait for you, mate. Yeah, sound. There is a field, yeah. but then there's quite a high gate. Aye. I don't know you'll be able to oh, we'll that out. This guy seems yeah. to know that where there might be a key. It seems the man's lying on a gated track deeper into the woods. And worryingly, he's showing signs of paralysis. Right, he's about a mile and a half down that track. There's a cyclist going to take, going to go down the track to where he is. It's not not the track on our left hand side. Yeah, where the people are. Okay, mate. Right, we have no wind, so I'm just going to go straight yeah. up, turn around and straight up here. What's Bron's going to do? Is she going to go down? Uh, yeah, she's going to go as far as she can to get, try and get a key for the gate for where the patient is. The key on Middlewood Station for it. I put it there myself. <laughs> Four years ago. I don't want to say I told you so, but <laughs> is that the cyclist there? Yeah. Yeah. You follow him. He'll take us to where he is then. Well, I've got to go at cyclist speed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's someone waving now. Three o'clock. 
three o'clock, not soon. In the tree line. Got the wires, they're staying in the low ground, the wires. Yeah, visual. Yeah. Uh, this is Kurt from 98, uh, visual routine, just looking to land. Right, not to land on a rock, that's all. You've got, got some rocks to you right now. Yeah. Gary's touching down as close to the accident scene as he can. From here on, the team's on foot. Hey, are you all right? Oh, this is the one where we need the keys. Can I just give you that a second, mate, and I'll uh, yeah. climb over? At last, veteran mountain biker Rob Hobson is about to get the help he needs. He must have been there over half an hour now, then. Yeah. 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 Right, OK. Yeah. What's his name? Rob. Rob. Hello, Rob. Hi, My name's Paul. All right, mate, Tim, what's happened? Right, I've gone down that gnarly bit there. I tried to go over the handlebars. OK. I pulled it, and then it just gripped, and then chucked me over the handlebars. Right, and OK. It just went head first. It's, it's a rock straight it's, on the top of my it's head. Impact, it's impact, impact here, look. Right, yeah. Right, so, and as soon as I hit that, yeah. literally, my body went numb from the neck down. Right, OK. Felt like my head was just rolling down the hill. Yeah. Couldn't feel legs anything below my neck. Right, OK. And then, now I've been laid here a bit, obviously, look, I can wobble my feet. Sure, yeah, yeah. And I can start to move them, but I've just got massive pins, burning pins and needles in, like, my shoulders, across my chest, this arm. Right, so is it across your front more than your back, is it? Yeah, I think so. It's right, just, OK. It's these arms just feel dead. Rob's symptoms are very serious. Pins and needles are a classic sign of a spinal cord injury. We'll get your helmet off in a few minutes, Rob, but I wanted to give you a quick assessment, mate. Right. Obviously, your job is to make sure you don't move his head. One wrong movement could kill their patient. Paul knows the impact could have caused other severe injuries. He wants to rule out other problems before dealing with Rob's spine. And the most critical stage in this rescue is about to begin. Paul must remove Rob's helmet and straighten his neck. It's a risky procedure, but it's got to be done. It's an old joke, but the Yorkshire Dales really can experience four seasons in one week. After a few days of sunshine, snow and ice are causing treacherous conditions on the roads. What we got? OK, cheers, mate. Driver unconscious. Now there's a serious accident. The flight to the outskirts of Harrogate will take 15 minutes from their base in Topcliffe. Top the traffic and amid 9 and Alpha engine mode start outbound Harrogate. 9 and Alpha, take your discretion, present position, surface of 20011, cross all runways. Pete Rhodes is the lead paramedic today. With over 20 years' experience, he's seen hundreds of car smashes. And he knows accidents involving trees are among the most serious. Crumple zones and airbags can do little to protect drivers or their passengers. More information is coming through from the emergency services already at the scene. With winds gusting to 40 miles an hour, it's going to be a bumpy ride for pilot Ian Musset, along with his navigator and paramedic, Leon Baranowski. I'm trying to get the right amount of pedaling. We're flying a little bit yeah, out of balance at the moment. The aircraft is getting buffeted from side to side. Ian's working hard to keep it on an even keel. Landing can be the most difficult part of the flight, even without high winds. As they approach the accident scene, extreme precision will be required to get the air ambulance down safely. The driver and passenger are injured and trapped, but with the car in such a precarious position, firefighters must secure it before the patients can be taken out of the wreckage. It's come off the road um, at speed and it's managed to trap itself between some uh, hedgerow and trees and things, so access is quite difficult. We've also got a ditch full of water, so it, access is quite an issue at the moment. Um, we've got plenty of uh, personnel on site, crews from ambulance and from fire service making sure at all times that this vehicle is stable because it's part in the air. So we've, we've also attached it to the trees using some of our straps to maintain that stability for the casualty and also for the crew safety. With the car secure, the firefighter's priority is to get the passenger, who's called Natalia, safely out. Pete suspects that both she and boyfriend Martin may have spinal injuries. This must be a delicate procedure. Looking at the... 
what could have happened. Um, car versus trees at you know 40 miles per hour. It looks like they've probably been relatively quite lucky. Both Natalia and Martin are Polish. English is a second language. Language difficulties can cause quite a few problems when you're trying to assess patients. Um, in trauma, though, it's relatively easy because you can usually see where, where the problem is or at least find easily where the problem is. In medical patients, it takes a little bit more in terms of investigative questioning, then uh, it's a lot harder to, harder to do. The ambulance service does have a setup for that. We can use an interpreter through a language line, but the process of getting all of that in place whilst on scene can be quite lengthy at times. So um, usually we do our best to muddle on through and just <laughs> go, with the, go with the stock words and the stock uh, hand signs. Stay still, Martin. 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 Nice and still for me, my friend. We've got a blanket coming over to keep her warm now. Like Natalia, Martin needs to be brought out of the car horizontally to avoid damaging his spine. The high winds mean that for once, both casualties will have a smoother ride going to hospital by road. Yeah. That seat will fall down with a polo. That yeah. boot's going to get unbolted. He yeah. will literally go straight out of there if oh, you want to. Perfect. Yeah. Everything is geared up at the back. Do you want to look at the space at the back? Because if you're happy, we'll go with it. I'll just show you now. Hey, that's 21. Very good. All, uh, all patients are going to be going by road to Harrogate, so uh, we're not going to be conveying anyone. As Natalia is taken to the ambulance, the tricky procedure of getting Martin onto a spinal stretcher is underway. Can you get us another extrication ball, please, mate, for getting this? Yeah. Slide him out. It'd be easier to slide him out than that, that's all. If Pete's suspicions of a spinal injury are correct, one false move at this stage could leave the patient paralysed. Yeah, you've got to relax and trust us. We practice this a lot, OK? Deep in the woods, on the edge of the Peak District, 49-year-old mountain biker Rob Hobson is lying critically injured. His neck is feared broken. I just heard quite a loud noise going down the slope. Yeah, I just went to see if he was OK, and he was complaining that he kind of couldn't feel his arms and his legs, so obviously quite serious, so I just called the ambulance. Are you comfortable as best as you can be? Because I don't want to move you just because yeah. there's a rock on just at the minute. So there's no pain in your stomach, is there? He thought he couldn't feel his legs or anything like that, but we saw him moving his legs. We just tried to calm him down, really. He kept sort of saying, it's bad, mate, it's bad. <laughs> it's a bit of a worry. In a few minutes, once we've just done your blood pressure, Bob, yeah. we're going to sort you out, mate. Right. How old are you? It was a, a consensus talk earlier on that we said we're not going to do anything too silly. And, um, you know, it happens. Paul and James are going to need help from Mountain Rescue to move their patient. MRT in about five minutes off. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm just getting him a grid now. That's fine. What we're going to do then, obviously, because we don't know what's happened to you, uh, your neck particularly, um, and because you've got this loss of... Uh, sensation, numbness yeah. and what have you. As you're probably already thinking, we're going to treat you for the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, I'll carry on physically and just give you a quick once over, just to make sure we're not missing anything. Yeah, OK, mate, we don't want you to do anything, but if you get any pain, yeah. shout us. Are you ready, mate? Paramedic Paul must now remove Rob's helmet. A mistake now could kill their patient. James is holding Rob's head rigid, but the next stage is even more critical. Right, Rob, we're going to have to... Straighten your neck slightly. There's no C-spine tenders. We're going to go to your, to so you can look right. into your right. So I'll do it. Look towards yeah. out. All right. Straightening Rob's neck is necessary, but fraught with danger. You just keep your head nice and still. You can let go now, mate. Yes. Nice and slow. Can you move How's that? Right arm, boss? Limited movement. Rob's life right, is in the oh. team's hands. Yeah. So you've still got no pain in your neck? No. Fantastic. Slow, you've been nice and steady. You're doing really well there, Bob. I know it's uncomfortable, mate. Yeah. All right, right. and I know it's quite scary. Do you not think that I... No, so I don't just think bear with it. At last, it's done. Now they can protect Rob's neck with a surgical collar. A mountain rescue team has arrived. Hiya, mate, all right? Just going to be from you, put your guys' point of view. Some hands when we transfer him, but yeah. probably just a bell stretcher just to get him back up to aircraft. Right, we've got plenty of hands here. It's fine. But getting Rob to the chopper won't be easy. He's come off on a very steep track. Mountain Rescue are going to provide the manpower the team needs. If we're all set. This is going to be uncomfortable, yeah, Rob. Okay, yeah. okay. Ready to lift. Yeah. Ready. And lift. Oh. That's good. That's all good. And we're there. That's good enough. And there, call it. Ready to lower. 
Yep. And lower. We'll get your head up in a minute, boss, as well. No, no, no. We've just scooped him up now. Mountain Rescue are just getting him out on one of their stretchers. Um, to be honest, we've got plenty of hands, actually. I'll leave the lock to the gate uh, on it, rather not lock it, so that we can access out of it. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Leslie. Thanks for your help, Doug. These guys are now going to carry up this track. We're going to get into the aircraft and then we're going to fly it to Sheffield. So it's only going to be the shortest flight on record, probably. Yeah. All right, but we'll get you there smoothly, at least. Yeah. All right, mate. Hi, it's uh, Helimed 98. We've got a um, trauma call feed up, please. It's less than two hours since Rob arrived in the woods on a day trip from his home in Lincoln. Now he's on his way to a lengthy stay in hospital. Hi, it's uh, Paul on the panics of the uh, air ambulance. Called a 49-year-old male. He's come down uh, quite a distance along a, a rocky yeah. path on his bike. Um, he's come over the handlebars and landed head first onto a rock. Even for the seasoned mountain rescue team, it's been a tricky operation. Well, it just demonstrates how difficult it is. Even though it's a short distance, um, it is quite you know, difficult, especially with the, con the underground conditions and the kind of um, injury the chap had as well, potential injury the chap had. We need to go feet first. Accidents in Warncliffe Woods are common, but they're rarely this serious or this far off the beaten track. The team's flying Rob direct to the Sheffield Northern General Hospital, 10 miles away. It's the regional trauma unit. Element 982, on approach, Northern General. I'm going to hold him to hover. Hi, hover, just about blow away. Oh, lad, look at him. Shelter him behind building, bless him. How's that thing feeling? Is it uh, coming back? A little bit, but it just really burns in my elbows and in your elbows. shoulders. The team know the outlook for their patient could be bleak. Rob's about to undergo CT scans and X-rays to determine the extent of his spinal injury. It's quite a significant mechanism of injury, so it's ideal really for the uh, hospital staff uh, to be able to see what's happened on the external side so they can get an idea about what's happened internally. If you go to road traffic, and generally it's quite good for them to take the, the helmet. Although, obviously, as you can see from the top of the helmet, there's not a lot of damage, it doesn't necessarily mean there hasn't been quite a big impact. The next few hours could change his life forever. On the outskirts of Harrogate, paramedic Pete and the fire crew are attempting to safely extract an injured driver from his wrecked car. He left the road and ploughed into some trees. The team suspect a spinal injury. For your information, we're just going to take the back seats out now. All right, all right Martin. So there's going to be a little bit of noise and banging behind you, but it's all something that we have to do. OK? Fire up the tool, Steve. Yeah. Um, they must get him on a spinal board and bring him out horizontally to avoid further injury. But there's a tree wedged against his door, so the safest way out is backwards. We've removed the uh, door from the passenger side, we've also removed the tailgate. Um, and what we're intending to do now is, now we've removed the back seats, is to lower the seat for the driver um, and then stretch the casualty out the back. OK, guys, lower it. Right, can we get two of your guys just sort of at our shoulders to get the, the head in and bring him down? Some of that sort of this is going to be a delicate operation. The bridge is going to be quite awkward, isn't it? Yeah. Turns how far back they can get in. He's lying down now. I don't these feet aren't traps. So. That's it. Good man, Martin. You're doing really well. Right. Yeah. Martin, now we're friends. We're going to grab onto your legs, yeah, OK? Yeah. yeah. Onto his slide. Rest. You've got him down there. Same again. On slide, one, two, three, slide. This procedure is slow and careful for good reason. If Martin has damaged his spine, any sudden jolts could cause permanent damage and paralysis. Rest there, his right elbow is just a jar on the plastic. It's gonna carry on with slide, okay? One, two, three, slide. Okay, that's it. Okay, one more. Is everybody ready? Yeah. On slide, one, two, three, slide. Brilliant. Okay, guys, thank you. There we go. I'll get in there. Some of you can yeah. feed in there. Brilliant. Turn down. Perfect. Okay. Nice and still. Lovely. Okay, okay. Just get some blocks on you. Just because you've had a bit of a do, you're not quite sure what's happened. 
Martin was traveling back from a weekend away in the lakes. Now he's facing possible surgery to his back or neck. But his injuries aren't his only worries. Can you pass me my phone, please, yeah? Your what? My phone. All right, we'll sort that in a minute, yeah? yeah. All right. We'll sort it out, don't worry, it's mate. Relax for now. Let's get you in the ambulance and we'll yeah. get everything sorted. Time, time in the flight. Right. No, I'll put it in my pocket. No, I'll yeah. sort it. I'll give it to you in the ambulance, yeah. okay? okay? Thank you. Don't worry. We're surrounded by coppers, mate. No one's going to nick it. Ready, steady, lift. Marvellous. No. He'll be taken by land ambulance to join Natalia at the nearby Harrogate Hospital. This might be a life-changing accident for both of them. Scans on their spines are already scheduled. The James Cook University Hospital in Middlesbrough covers some of the UK's most rugged countryside, the rolling moors and isolated dales of North Yorkshire. For many of its patients, it's an hour's drive or more from home. And today on the helipad, paramedics James and Andy have an urgent mission. Yeah, the details are a bit sketchy. Uh, but it's somebody semi-conscious after a tractor versus slurry pit accident. Slurry pit? Yeah, you're going to get covered in shit. The accidents happen just 20 miles away as the crow flies. Um, but it's going to Local paramedics are beating the chopper, but they're a 40 minute drive from Middlesbrough. That's road we're topping. Oh, yeah. I'll just mark that so we're waiting for that to start with. Okay. Pilot Steve Wardby will have his team at the isolated farm in 10 minutes. Sounds quite serious. Concerns about the airway. We've been semi conscious. Just that's the first thought that goes through my mind. We'll see what we get there. Rosedale is a tiny community surrounded by the high hills of the North York Moors. No obvious wires by side. Thank you very much. I'll make a bit of a slope, actually. Unless, you, <laughs> unless you're right by the gate. No, we'll go right up there. Yeah. Got wriggly tin sheets there, guys. Just watch that for me. Yeah, cheap. No, 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 no. Claire Dring was driving a tractor when it careered backwards through the wall of a barn. The cause of the accident isn't clear. How are we doing? For some reason, we don't know whether there's been a, a sort of an episode at the wheel or whatever. Yeah. But it's rolled backwards. It's gone through that low wall there, which has destroyed it. Taken the um, end of the wall. The tractor came to a rest just feet from the slurry tank. There's the back of the cab, like a glass cab, yeah. which was missing, and it's possibly hit a head on some of the um, wood and the stone structure on the back of that, so we're thinking some form of head injury. Claire is confused and lapsing in and out of consciousness. Yeah. Um, when you say head injury, are we on about um, with lower GCS or...? Um, agitation more than anything. So probably about GCS 14, maybe. Yeah. It's OK. Claire, nice and still for me, nice and still. Tacky, ain't you? Her heart is racing. Paramedic Andy suspects Claire has a serious internal injury, but it could also be caused by a head wound. I think it's a tacky for, from that. I think so. I just, I just didn't want to... Sure. I'm just going to bob a cannula in. I can still manage to doing great. How did she get up here? She got, here, she got out. So she was unresponsive, probably had a bit of an LOC. Very much so. Yeah. So this chap was with her. I thought she was dead, so... And out, out cold? Yeah. So she was in there, just laid like that, looking pale or anything, or...? She's completely out. Like I say, she's mobilised up here, hasn't she? Do you know when she got out, then? Did you help her out, or did she just no, get out herself? No, a battle indicator, eh? Right. Yes, Can you go, do you want to have a look at it, mate? Yeah, I'll take a picture. Yeah. The, yeah. the back of it's obviously out, uh, but you can see where there's a the, uh, wood and stone look like they've come into the cab. That wall there, so all the wall's gone back with it. Bizarre. I don't know whether or not she's just lost it and then that's it, it's that's it's not back at head, but there's some confusion at the minute as to how long she may have been unconscious. So we can only go on really what we're looking at. So. She's not complaining of being in any pain, is she? No, not at all. No. It hasn't come out of her no, no. Claire, can we just ask you yet again, have you got any pain anywhere? No. No pain, OK. Her confusion and lack of visible injury are making the assessment difficult. Yeah, All of this yeah, the only injury sure that I see well, uh, okay. is some bruising to the left side of her face. Left side, uh, this, so this there. Where my it? hand is. Sort of temple area. As well, yeah. Left temporal zygoma area. It's a perplexing right. case. Bring, Bring it down. down. All right. Yeah. 
Let us know when you're ready, mate. Just keep your arms in. All right. But there is a further clue. We constantly had this right-hand gaze over to this way. Weird, isn't it? Her head is to the right, and the gaze has always been to the right. Her constant glancing to the right could be a symptom of a brain injury. Just there. So we've got a bit round here, haven't we? A bit of a lump there. What is clear is that Claire urgently needs X-rays and brain scans at James Cook. Helimed 99 is going to be heading back to Middlesbrough. You're doing a good job there. Excellent job. The air ambulance is always a welcome sight on the moors. It means the local medics can stay to deal with the next emergency rather than wasting time on the long drive on poor roads to the trauma centre. Hi, uh, it's uh, Andy on Elamed 99 again. Now, we're wondering whether she's had a bit of a do right. while she's been in the tractor, or she's, she's got something going on post-incident. Oh, probably about 10 minutes. All right, bye. Bye. Paramedic Andy is hoping diagnostic tests will answer the many mysteries surrounding this case. She could have had a fit, she could have had some cardiac event, which has caused her to lose control. Or it could be a mechanical failure of the tractor. Got a fast pulse, which is a bit unusual. Um, if she's had a fit, you could have a fast pulse. A bounce to the edge, you could have a fast pulse. So something was, something's not quite right. Claire is now minutes from intensive care. Ready, steady slide. She's x-rayed and a head injury is ruled out. But she has lacerated her liver. She undergoes surgery and after four days is fit to return to the country. It's been a lucky escape. Hello, I'm below service. Is the patient breathing? It's midwinter in North Yorkshire, and Helimad 98 is heading up to one of its most famous landmarks, a huge chalk horse carved into the side of the rugged North York moors. We responded to a 67-year-old female who has fallen near the White Horse up in North Yorkshire. Um, we've got a, a crew responding to back us up as well as uh, mountain rescue. Bloody wind slightly from the left. The patient's life is in real danger. She's lying in sub-zero temperatures, unable to walk, and a long way from a road. Knowing the area, um, as we do from Boston, lying from top of it, um, it is quite steep. Um, so to try and get reasonable access to this lady might be quite difficult, so it might be a bit of a, a trek down a hill or up a hill, whichever we may find when we get there. Some of the white horses down south are, are really old, aren't they? They're kind of prehistoric. Uh, but I've got a feeling the one that the one that sold bank is just like, like 50, 60 years ago, somebody decided it'd be cool <laughs> if they had a white horse. There's <laughs> a bit of graffiti, that's what you're yeah, basically, yeah. We've got rain ahead, guys. For paramedics Paul and Al, this is a routine mission made risky by the weather. Helimed 98's heading for a storm. I think ice forming on the... Uh, quite a bit. It's so cold, the rain is freezing on contact with the chopper. We'll come down. That's out, outside areas plus one. If the ice is allowed to build up, its weight could cause Helimed 98 to crash. Pilot Steve must get out of the rain fast. We're in descent now. We'll get red clear of this. You can see the ground there now. There we are. We're just about to come out now. It stops as soon as it started but the same freezing conditions are making this rescue even more urgent. There we are, casualty, oh, yeah, two yeah. o'clock. Visual, yeah. We'll land on the top and yeah, yeah. go down. Yeah, yeah, on the top and come down. How are we doing? Make two words, uh, just arrived at patient side now. The team's patient is a veteran walker, stranded on a treacherous footpath along the edge of the moors. For a minute. You know me fitting well? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you've not been knocked out, you can remember everything that's happened to you? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Judith Moore is in agony and dangerously cold. We were coming up the bank. It was slippery, so we were taking our time. I, 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 I was leading and I slipped and fell back onto my wife. She hit the ground with me. And I, and, I, and I must have fallen on a leg. Yeah. So you see something more around your knee, is it? Yeah. It's like... 
Yeah. 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 I wonder if you've, wonder if you've dislocated yeah. your knee. Paramedic Paul diagnoses a broken leg and a dislocated knee. Judith's basically come over as her husband's fallen on top of yeah. her. She's, she's unable to move her knee as it is at the minute. I'm wondering whether it's more dislocated than that. Right. Than anything else. She's really cold, so we could do doing something to keep her warm. That's why I put so if we, just, if we get the flexel on, on the path, yeah, yeah. just get her into it and then we'll, we'll get her sorted. How are you feeling? You just called. I know. We've got a nice big thick sleeping bag there for you. Priority really is to uh, insulate it because the air temperature is probably only about four or five degrees, um, and when you're laid um, in contact with the ground and not moving, you lose a lot of heat, so you get very cold quickly. That's what <laughs> you like. Where are you from? Oh, they're all tough up there, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Nice and silly, oh. sweetheart. Just try and twizzle around on your bum. Give me both your legs. Oh, 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 oh. Stop, 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 stop. Okay, right. Sorry. All we're going to do now is just turn you that way. It's perfect. Now just relax back. They're wrapping Judith in the Flexalon. It's a fur lined bag designed to lock in heat. Right, sweetheart. You'll soon warm up. All right. How are you doing? You kept this seat. Ground paramedics have trekked more than a mile along the clifftop path. Hello, love. This is my old pal here now. The other boys on the way down. But there aren't enough people to carry Judith up the slippery bank to the chopper Sorry. safely. 100 metres to the oh, top. Well, they'll let uh, And the uh, carry her up there. MRT's on the way. Yeah, but so. the same's on the way back. Yeah. They're going to need mountain rescue, but the weather's worsening and the temperatures are plummeting. High on the edge of the North York Moors, Walker Judith Moore desperately needs help. I'll come inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just sit on it now. Just sit on a black, find a black bit and sit on it. A mini tent will shield Judith from sub-zero right. temperatures. You'll literally be scorching. I mean, you don't know why you were so cold, do it? Surprising how quickly you warm up once you get inside the uh, the shelter. Although it doesn't look to be much, it traps all the body heat from everybody in it, so the more people can get in it, the warmer you get. Can I just lift your sleeve up, sweetheart? And it also sweetheart. protects you from any convection or losing heat to the surroundings. Paramedics Al and Pete are waiting for mountain rescue to help carry their patient to the chopper. Let's just flip this over so we can have a good look at what's going on. They're giving her powerful painkillers. Her injury is agonizing and they need to straighten her leg. Try and relax, sweetheart, as best as you can. Nice, long, deep breaths, love. That's it. Well done, Judith. Just try and keep your leg nice and relaxed. Well done, sweetheart. Nice, deep breaths on that gas for me. The team's impressed by her courage. You happy there? Yeah. You've done that really well there, Judith. You're right, she's hard. <laughs> We've got mountain rescue coming out. OK, so they're going to put you on their stretcher to be able to get you up a lot easier yeah. than having to carry you. All oh, right, I think it's got a big wheel on it or something like that. Oh, you wear ambulance. Yes, love. We'll carry you up to the helicopter and we'll get you on board there. All oh, right, do At last, mountain rescue have reached the scene. Hi there. Hey, guys, you all right? Yeah, good, thank you. Yeah, no, for you. This is Judith. <laughs> Um, Judith basically had a fall, uh, husband's fell on top of her, she's then fallen down. I think it's a proximal tibia fracture. Um, we'll probably wait on a few more just to lift. Yeah. Slide the stretcher in, yeah. down, clip up, load and go. That sounds good to me. You're the experts. But the ground is lethal. Prepare to raise and raise. Well done, Judith. Good luck. And fair to lower and lower. They're going to use their specialist stretcher to carefully carry Judith 200 metres through the woods up to the chopper. The Helimed team can call on seven mountain rescue teams, all volunteers who turn out from home or work. Fading on the sides. Without mountain rescue's help, this would have been a risky journey. And we get to sunshine. 
Judith's reached safety. OK, tug and glider out at the 2 o'clock. Bank radio ahead of Edson, I think, uh, lifting and uh, turning to the north. Pilot Steve's anxious to get his patient to hospital before the weather turns again. And it's still making its presence felt. Uh, some hail stem, look. Oh, big yeah. pieces as well, look. Wow. Well, we're on duty, so I do. Yeah, sir. Element 98, uh, Alaska lifted, routed James Cook. They are heading north, 20 miles to Middlesbrough. Surgeons are waiting to assess Judith's injury. Hello, Alpha, surface wind, 260 degrees, 1-1. One, one. Thank you. Judith's hill walking days may be over. Yorkshire's heritage helps drive a tourism business worth £6 billion a year. But there's one group of visitors who do more than most to bring history to life. For the born-again mods, the scooter is still king of the road, and Parker's the height of fashion. Vintage shirts change hands for hundreds of pounds, and a restored Lambretta can cost more than a car. But news has just come in to the Topcliffe base that a rider has come off in bad weather between York and Harrogate. Pilot Steve Wardby and paramedic Kit von Mikvitz know that these cases can be serious. I've got some at That's all Yeah, thanks. I'm just going to go uh, east left. Oh, DCA there at 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah, Roger. Oh, yeah, he's on the bend. He's lost it on the bend. Right. We'll come down onto that patch there in the, in the 1 o'clock. Right, I'll make that puddle. There you go. Lead paramedic Paul is first out of the helicopter. He gets an update from local paramedics. Hey, guys, you all right? Hey, mate, you all right? This is Steve, he's come off his bike. OK. Um, he's got good air entry. I've got no radio, but I've got a carotid. Steve, where's it hurting, mate? In the back. Right in your back? In I can imagine, mate. So what's that pain now on a scale of 0 to 10? Fucking 10. 10? You can feel it crunching, can you? 49-year-old Steve Campbell's description is graphic and worrying. His restored scooter is badly damaged. The weather is atrocious. There's mud on the road, and he came off on the bend. He did have a bit of blood in his mouth, and he's got chewing gum, which I've removed. Oh, right, OK. No loss of consciousness or anything like that? No. Right, OK. Steve was on his way to a scooter rally when the accident happened. Ah! Oh! The crunching sensation in Steve's back is called crepitus. It could mean he's displaced the bones or cartilage in his spinal column. The team will have to be very careful when they move him. Steve, you know me fit and well? Hey? You know me fit and well? Yeah. Yeah? I think them stats are accurate, you know? Looks a bit sad, obviously, isn't it? Um, stats are 84%. The amount of oxygen in his blood is low and his skin is blue. The cold isn't helping. They need to warm him up. I'm conscious he's going to become hypothermic soon, and if you're yeah, not careful, yeah. so I'll, I'll can, we'll can you him back at wagon. Yeah. Unless, unless he's under a, a lot of pain as we start rolling him, then we'll just reassess it. All right. I see if what we're doing is we're just going to be putting a scoop underneath your back, all right? This will be a roll and lift without pain relief. It's not going to be easy for patient Steve. Steady. Ah! Ah! All right, Steve. Well done. You're doing well. You're doing really well. Ah! Okay. No! Just the board going under. It's just to get your, just keep your head still for us. All right. Okay. We're gonna roll back. Ready? Steady. You're doing really, really well. All right. You're doing really well. How are you doing, Steve? Painful. I bet it is, mate. Just bear with us. The thing is... Yeah. Kit, can you get some morphine drawn up? Oh. Oh, right, one last bump. Oh. Fantastic. Right. Put that on you. You're he can right. now get the pain relief he badly needs. What's wrong? Where am I? You're on an ambulance. 
Ketamine is a powerful and effective drug, but it can leave the patient confused. All right, Steve. All right. What's wrong? You feel scared? You're on an ambulance now and we're going to look after you, OK? He does feel some uh, crepitus, some movement in his back. Um, so obviously that's a big concern, really, because if he has done anything significant, the more we move him, the more of a damage it's going to do, potentially. Right, Steve, I'm going to give you some morphine. Can you do me a favour? Yep. Can you have been on this side? Can yep. you just cut that other sleeve off? Yep. No, not, not the jacket. Sorry, mate. No, no. What's wrong? Get your back? No, the jacket. Oh, you're going to have to cut that off. I'm afraid we did, mate. I'm, uh, if we could have saved it, we would do, but that's the least of his worries at the minute. 40 year old, that jacket. You just sliced it up. And I've just cut it off. I've, did, I've ruined his day. If it wasn't okay. ruined already. Oh, no, no, no. Steve's going to be flown to the Leeds General Infirmary. Oh, yeah. I need to go further oh. on, Kit, I think. Oh. Is that done anything for your pain at all, that morphine? No. Nothing. Fedus 99 lifted to LJ. His main injury is going to be his back. Uh, what he's done to that obviously depends on the, uh, the x-rays uh, when he gets the casualty. Um, but we're querying the pelvis because of the mechanism of injury more than anything else. During the flight, Steve's pain becomes unbearable. Paramedic Paul decides to give him more ketamine. Paul is up to all right. He's still in a lot of pain, this lad, so. And it's not nine months at LGI. Ah, okay. Steve's taken straight to Resus to be examined by a team of specialists. Scans reveal why he's in so much pain. His back is broken in three places. Steve had major surgery to stabilize his spine, but serious complications meant he spent six weeks in hospital. He's now home and making a good recovery, but his scooter riding days are behind him. Judith, the woman who slipped on ice near Sutton Bank, was taken for x-rays. She had dislocated her knee and broken her leg. She was in plaster for six weeks and will need a replacement knee before she attempts any more hiking. Martin, who embedded his car in trees, broke three ribs and fractured his wrist. His girlfriend, Natalia, wasn't so lucky. She had to undergo surgery for a fractured neck, but is recovering well. As for mountain biker Rob, tests revealed he had also broken his neck. Three vertebrae are now bolted together. But he's determined to get back out into the woods with his mountain biking mates. Only he's got a lot of recovery to do first. Ongoing, I'm on physiotherapy to bring back my movement because I'd lost movement in my legs and strength in my arms. For the time being, the bike riding's out. Perhaps got to start acting my age, which is nearly 50, and uh, think about taming it down a bit. <laughs>